The Realme XT is a mid-ranger with an AMOLED screen, under-display fingerprint reader, large battery, and a unique quad camera setup, all for around 200 euros. The design is gorgeous and sleek. It's rare for a mid-ranger to have Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back. Realme did cut corners with the frame though, although it looks like metal, it's made of plastic instead. The pearl white finish is quite eye-catching, changing colors in a curved gradient when it reflects light. The camera hump is quite huge though, and the Realme XT will wobble a lot on a desk or table. But you won't have this problem if you use the included silicon case. With both Gorilla Glass and a case, you won't have much to worry about, except water. There's no waterproofing here. The Realme XT's display is a 6.4-inch Super AMOLED with a 1080p resolution. It's a bit smaller than last year's Realme X, and the notch cutout is a major difference too. Those who liked the edge-to-edge -edge screen of the Realme X might be disappointed, but if you're not into pop-up selfie cams, you'd be happy with the change. The display looks bright and punchy, and has a good pixel density of around 400 ppi. Blacks are super deep, and color reproduction is decent, though not terribly accurate. Brightness is pretty good at almost 450 nits maximum. There's no boost available in auto mode, but we didn't have issues using this phone in the sun. DC dimming is available to reduce eye fatigue from screen flicker too. There isn't always on display, but it only shows the date and a clock. And there isn't a notification LED either. The Realme XT has an optical under display fingerprint sensor that is speedy and nicely accurate. Beware if you're using a screen protector, as that might slow it down. There is face unlock too. It's fast, but not as secure. The Realme XT has a single bottom firing speaker. It scored an excellent mark in our loudness test, though audio quality isn't the best. High-pitched tones can come out tinny and harsh. You can plug in headphones through the 3.5mm jack, but the audio quality with them doesn't impress. Stereo separation isn't great, and loudness is just average. You do get FM radio though. With this phone, you get either 64 or 128 gigs of onboard storage. You can add extra space thanks to the dedicated microSD slot. The Realme XT runs Oppo's Color OS 6 over Android 9 Pi. We've already seen this interface on the Realme X, as well as the Realme 3 and 5 families. You will notice a difference from stock Android here. The notification shade and its quick toggles are redesigned. And the task switcher looks a lot like Apple's. There is a game space, which gives you options for performance and notifications while gaming. And you can navigate using either the on-screen keys or swipe gestures. These gestures will feel quite intuitive if you've used an Oppo, Huawei, or Xiaomi phone recently. The Realme XT runs on a Snapdragon 712 chipset, basically last year's Snapdragon 710 with a slightly higher clock speed. You also get 4, 6, or 8 gigs of RAM depending on the model. CPU performance is about 10% better than the Realme X, and indeed, it's better than most other phones in this class. There's more than enough GPU power for your games, and we didn't observe any significant throttling during our tests. The Realme XT has an ample 4000 mAh battery, and did great in our battery life tests, scoring an endurance rating of 100 hours. It was a major improvement over last year's Realme X, thanks to better performance and standby. The XT also supports Vogue 3.0 fast charging, and the 20 watt Volk charger does come in the box. It's able to bring the phone from 0 to 50% charge in half an hour. The Realme XT has a quad camera arrangement, like the Realme 5 and 5 Pro. There's an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel sensor for portrait mode, another 2 megapixel camera for taking macro shots, and the star of the show, the 64 megapixel main cam with a quad bayer filter. The main cam saves photos in 16 megapixels. And to be honest, it isn't such a huge improvement over the 48 megapixel quad bear sensors we've used. But with that said, shots do turn out quite nice. In good light, there is plenty of detail, true to life colors, low noise, and wide dynamic range. But we did notice some corner softness, and the processing sometimes has trouble with details in grass and foliage. There is a chroma boost mode, which uses image stacking to give you shots with more saturated colors and improved dynamic range. You do have the option to shoot a photo in the full 64 megapixels, but like other quad bayer setups, this doesn't offer you too much extra detail, and the file size is huge. If you zoom, you will get a digital crop from the main camera. There's even a 5x zoom toggle, but don't expect great quality here. Even at 2x, results are already quite soft. 
the ultra-wide camera has a 119 degree field of view. Detail isn't impressive though, and dynamic range is limited, and there's no autofocus, but you do get low noise and automatic distortion correction. Here are some shots we took with a dedicated macro camera. There's no autofocus, but you can get as close as 4 centimeters to the subject. The detail level is okay, but not great. The Realme XT shoots portraits with the help of the secondary portrait camera, which Realme says not only helps with depth sensing, but the contrast as well. These are excellent, with good edge detection and convincing defocused backgrounds. Messy hair is still a bit of a challenge though. In low light, photos from the main camera look good. The noise reduction still leaves behind a decent amount of detail, and colors are nicely rendered. If you turn on Chroma Boost, the colors will be more saturated, but that's about all the benefit you'll get. There is a dedicated night mode though, called Nightscape. Pictures take 2 or 3 seconds to process, and come out in 12 megapixels. You get a more even exposure, with a boost in shadows and dark areas. Detail is impressive too. Shooting with the ultra-wide cam at night will give you underexposed shots, with plenty of noise and little detail. If you switch on the Nightscape mode, the results are a little better, but still mediocre. Selfies are taken with the Realme XT's 16 megapixel f2.0 front-facing cam, which has fixed focus. It does a great job. If you have good lighting, you'll get super detailed and sharp selfies. Videos can be captured with the main camera in up to 4K at 30fps. There is no option to shoot with the ultra-wide cam, but these 4K videos look really good, with rich detail, spot-on colors, low noise, and impressive dynamic range. The high bitrate means that these take up a lot of space though. There's no EIS available in 4K, but there is stabilization if you switch over to 1080p. Quality is great here too. So that's the Realme XT. You get a bunch of features you might not expect at this price point. There's a beautiful build, a large AMOLED screen, great battery life with fast charging, competitive performance, and a nice camera experience. But the benefits of the 64 megapixel sensor over a 48 megapixel one are kind of hard to put your finger on. For now, it's just a numbers game. But the real downside of this phone isn't about the phone itself, but actually getting it. Realmes are only offered in a few select markets, and if you're outside of those, you'll have to buy a grey import. But even then, it might be worth it. If you want a mid-range phone with some really nice specs, and you don't want to break the bank, you might look no further than the Realme XT. It's a solid recommendation. Thanks for watching guys, and see you on the next one.